Okay, so I was in a stream with little Stephanie and the Converse Contender the other day, and the subject of faith, yeah, little Stephanie, and the, and the subject of faith came up. Faith is believing without evidence. There we go. That's Richard Dawkins. Quote, faith is believing without evidence. Now, last time I brought this up, I pointed out. That's a really good Richard Dawkins, by the way, Craig. Yeah, thanks. I know. I didn't really ask. I didn't really ask. I know it's a good Richard Dawkins. Really good. Really good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The last time I brought this up, I pointed out that the person who said those very words, faith is believing without evidence, wrote a book. Why is that relevant? Because a book is by definition a leap of faith. Somebody took issue with me, I swear to God, in the comment section. Atheist guy, no, a book isn't a leap of, a leap of faith. You have plenty of evidence, plenty of evidence that a book is going to be read. No, that's not true. There's plenty of evidence... If you sit down and write a book that is by definition a leap of faith, if you are Stephen King and you sit down and write a book, yeah, there's plenty of evidence that the book is going to be published and it's going to be read by a lot of people, sure. Why? Because there's a track record. But the first time you sit down, I don't care who you are, young little rapscallion Richard Dawkins sits down to write a book that is by definition a leap of faith, his first book. Why? Because thousands upon thousands of books get written every single week that don't get read or don't get published, or get published and then don't get read. Get published, nobody reads it, then gets dropped. That happens every single day. And some of those people are really talented, so it has nothing to do with how talented you are. Some, some of those people are for top of their field, just like Richard Dawkins may have been. I guess he's pretty was pretty well known in biology or something before he wrote his first book. You sit down and write your first book, that's a leap of faith, by definition. So the, the person took issue with that. Now, here's, here's the point, though, because that actually that particular person was just being unnecessarily contentious. An atheist, all atheists listening, or anybody listening, there's no reason to quibble with an analogy if you understand the point of the analogy. The, uh, the analogy is only used to underscore a point. So if you don't think that particular analogy works, you don't have to take issue with the, the analogy. You really don't. It's, it's, honestly, it's just being pointlessly contentious. Why? Because you understand the point. Okay, you don't like that particular analogy? You get what I'm saying? You can think of a hundred different things in life itself. hundred different examples of something requiring a leap of faith that even an atheist will, will, will take a leap of faith and go do something. You could think of hundreds of things. Deconvert a man himself, the most skeptical skeptic that ever a skeptic. The most skeptical skeptic that ever walked the face of God's good earth. Can't convince that guy of anything without showing him the data. Without showing him the data and per giving a clear view of the facts. He goes to he goes to a bar Friday night. He you know, he sees some pretty little atheist. He sidles up to her. Yeah, deconvert a man does that. You didn't know that? Yeah, he's cool like that. I swear to God. Swear to God, that guy's got the moves. He goes, hey, what's up, baby? Deconverted man here. All right. All right. Deconverted man here. Yeah, you might have heard of me. And she's like, oh, oh, are you the deconverted man? You're the deconverted man, not the deconverted man. Yeah, you might have heard of me because of my YouTube channel. Ain't no thing, sugar. You know, it's just a little thing I lay down every once in a while. Talk about, talk about how there isn't a God and those type of things. It ain't no thing, honey. Oh. Oh, 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 I, I, I feel funny. And he gets the digits, just like that, because he's smooth like that. I swear to God, he's cool like that. There are two ladies' men in the atheist community. Jim Majors, Jimbo Majors, mustachioed man, who, smooth as, smooth as silk, and Deacon Verma. Swear to God. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Maybe not. All right, whatever. Whatever. Point is, Deacon Verma man sidles up to the bar. Lays the deconverted man, moves down, gets the digits of the girl. Now he's going on his first date. That is by definition a leap of faith. That's my point. It's the only point. Yeah, a little roundabout story to underscore the point. Goes on a first date with someone. There's no data to be, to be read. There's no, there's no evidence to be gathered. You don't know the person yet. You go on a date, you are taking a leap of faith by definition. The point is, you don't like that analogy? Plug a different analogy in. People take leaps of faith. Even atheists, all the time in life. That's the point. That's the point. Richard Dawkins talks about it like a dirty word. Aaron Ra has parroted that slander on the word faith. Faith is the substance of life itself. Faith is the substance of life itself. You take leaps of faith in life all the time. That is not a downside to life. That's part of the adventure of life. 
It isn't wildly outlandish. Nor is it wildly like, you know, beyond all possible comprehension that if there is a God, he might want you to take a little leap of faith. He might want you to jump out on a limb to try and meet him there. As far as I know, and I don't, I'm, not, I'm not reading any atheist mail, I'm not looking at anyone in particular, so don't get, you know, don't get defensive. I'm not getting defensive, Craig. You're the one being defensive. Don't get defensive like I just said. I'm not being defensive, Craig. You're the one being defensive. I'm not looking at anybody in particular, but as far as I know, God could have been giving you little crumbs, little crumbs of evidence, little hints that he exists for the last 10, 15 years. When I became a Christian, I looked back on my last 15, 20 years prior to me becoming a Christian. I was like, oh, wow, totally different light. That was probably God. That was probably God. That incident was probably God. A lot of things in hindsight looked like, hmm, what they call kismet in other faiths or synchronicity. Synchronicity, that little thing there seemed like it was almost orchestrated for me to learn something. That's an experience that happens to people all the time. All the time. And it probably has happened to you as an atheist and you just wrote it off. Rationalized it away. Rationalized it away. Interesting little root to that word, isn't it? Rational mind. Rationalized it away. So, it's entirely possible that you say there's no evidence for God and God has been like tapping on your door for years. And the little, little clues that he's went like, here, this is me and this is me and this is me you've just been sort of disregarding is relevant. And it's also possible that part of, part, of the, part of the meeting God where he is, is, you know, you gotta take a little leap of faith, jump out, and jump out into the unknown. Why? Because that's what life is about. That's my point. You think deconverted man is gonna go, I don't have enough evidence to know if I can go out with that hot honey? No, of course not. He's gonna pursue it, why? Because he's a real man. <laughs> he's a real man, ain't he's man. He's a real ladies man. He doesn't need to see the evidence and the data to take a leap of faith on a new girl. You don't need the evidence. And the, there is no evidence in the data often in life and life. There isn't. Most of the times in life, you are just making your best inference based on the available information. And the available information is usually limited. Wake up, it's life. That's how life actually lives. That is actually how life is lived. I moved out to California based on a wing and a prayer. That's why they call it that, a wing and a prayer. Grab my then girlfriend. My then girlfriend goes, I want to move to Malibu. I want to move to Malibu. Well, Malibu? Where on earth is that going? Turned out she'd been flying back and forth to Malibu the whole time to two or three years prior to me meeting her. She had a whole network of, <laughs> like, yeah, a whole network out here. I want to move to Malibu. That was a leap of faith. I don't know anybody in California. Yeah, you'll know me. <laughs> you'll know me. And here's, here's, reasons, here's reasons X that make it seem like a good idea. Here's reasons Y. And I ran it by people in weird places. You know, honestly, I did. I was in bartending school back then. I, was, I made a lot of money as a bartender, actually, those years. I really did. You could, you could clean up in New York in those days. You probably still could, but I haven't done it since I've been a Christian. Um, but I was in bartending school. I had some crazy, crazy, crazy good gig as like a high-end bartender. Back then, I think I was making, I think I cleared $900 in cash a week, I think. Yeah, I think I had 200 bucks a night, cash. Now, that's a lot of money now. Back then, it was like crazy. It was crazy money. Um, but it was sick. It was like you worked 60 hours a week. Um, you worked round the clock, basically. You got there, and they paid you too. I think they paid you six bucks an hour. So it was really good money, but you had no life outside of going to the place and bartending. <laughs> you bartended. You know, it was like a high-end Italian restaurant in New Canaan, Connecticut. Probably still there. Probably still there. Medi there were three of them. Mediterraneo, my wife lived above in Greenwich. And I forget what that one was called. Sole, I think. It's probably still there. I bet you anything. Google it. Google it. Ask them what the bartenders make. I was taking home $150, $200 in cash while being paid six, six bucks an hour. That's a lot of money back then. That's still pretty good for here now, but back then that was a fortune. Um, anyways, I changed the subject. What was I talking about? So, took a leap of faith. Move out to California. I don't know anybody in California. Leap of faith required in life, often. 
And I ran it by, the reason why I brought up that particular story is I ran it by someone I was taking bartending class because I was trying to get better. I was actually wasn't good enough to be working at the room. There wasn't. Jen got me the good job. Jen has a, my, my wife has a way of like really, really networking well. Like she, the people who she knows and can meet, you blow your mind. Blow your mind. Blew my mind at the time, actually. Um, and she got me the job because she knew the owner and she knew the manager and things like that. So I was really really wasn't good enough to be working there and kind of showed. Everybody <laughs> kind of knew it. So I started taking bartending classes while I was working there and I asked the girl in the bartending class and ran it by her. And she's the one who like solidified the idea, yeah, you should go. Don't know, it just kind of works like that in life. I ran it by, they say in the Bible, there's wisdom in a multitude of counselors. So I ran it by a bunch of different people. And certain types of people were like, no, stay here. Here's everything that you've ever known. Stay here in New York. It's everything you've ever known. And other people were like, yeah, go. Are you crazy? You crazy? Get out. Move. Live. Live. That's what the girl said. Honestly, that's what the girl said. She said, yes, absolutely. Live. It's really what she said. <laughs> really. And they I took it right to heart. That's why I remembered her specifically. Because hers was the, the advice that solidified. Basically said, you have to. Why do you have to? Because it's life. It's life. You take a moment like that, you know, Shakespeare had something like that where you, there's, there's a time where the ship passes. There's a time where the ship passes and you better jump on that ship because it's not coming back around. And you'll look back on that decision-making process, you might regret that for the rest of your life. And as the, who said this? As the butthole surface said, I swear to God, it's a butthole surface. It's better to regret something you have done than to regret something you haven't done. That's the butthole surface, swear to God. So, there you have it, kids. Faith is not a dirty word. Sometimes faith is the absolute substance of life itself. Sometimes faith is what is required for you to live a happy, successful, adventurous life. You don't want to stay in a hubble in New York the whole, your whole life, do you? Do you? You want to stay in your little backwater, Midwestern, nowhere town? Or you want to get out in the world and live a little? Well, take a leap of faith. Take a leap of faith. There's no good reason why that word should be so disparaged in the atheist community. It's life itself. It really, honest to God, is sometimes. It really is. So, there you have it, kids. That is all for now. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.